بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اياك نعبد واياك نستعين distinguished heads of states secretary general eco excellencies ladies and gentlemen in pakistan's capacity as the 13th summit chair it is my honor to formally open the 14th summit of economic cooperation organization i extend warm welcome and cordial greetings to all the participating leaders i want to especially appreciate president erdogan's initiative in organizing this virtual summit convening the summit in these difficult times is a reflection of collective commitment to eco we commend secretary general hadi suleiman par for ably leading the organization work pakistan congratulates turkmenistan as the next eco chair but i especially want to congratulate president ilham alayev on successful liberation of azerbaijan's occupied territories excellencies in 2017 we celebrated the silver jubilee of expansion of eco membership and adopted the landmark eco vision 2025 and the islamabad declaration <clears throat> it reflected pakistan's strong resolve to advance our institutional goals and energize eco as a dynamic organization for regional cooperation excellencies the focus of our present summit regional economic cooperation in the aftermath of covid-19 is both apt and timely like the rest of the world the member states of eco have been severely affected by the unprecedented health and economic crises unleashed by covid-19 pandemic over 115 million people have been infected by the virus and more than 2.5 million people have lost their lives the world is grappling with pandemics multiple dimensions the full extent of its health social financial and economic impact on our countries has yet to be fully determined it is evident that developing countries including eco members have been disproportionately affected our economies have contracted trade has declined poverty and inequality has increased excellencies we in pakistan realize that we must prevent our people from dying from the virus and from hunger we face these twin challenges like lot of the developing world we pursue the people and poor centric approach and doing this very difficult balancing act saving lives securing livelihoods and at the same time stimulating the economy a, a extremely difficult balancing act and despite our financial constraints my government allocated an unprecedented 8 billion dollars to support the poorest and the most vulnerable households and then small businesses with direct cash handouts and then subsidies to the poor under our, our esas program excellencies the covid-19 pandemic is not over we must ensure that our people secure the earliest possible access to vaccines being produced but on an affordable and equitable basis the vaccine must be declared a global public good because actually no one will be safe from the virus unless everyone is safe pakistan has begun its uh, vaccination drive but it has only so far concentrated on the frontline health workers which obviously is everyone's highest priority we must also address the economic impact of the pandemic the world economy has contracted by 5% but 
the rich countries have injected 20 trillion dollars to stimulate their economies. I again repeat, the rich countries have injected 20 trillion dollars. Our economies have been equally affected, but we do not have the capacity of fiscal space to create such liquidity. I have proposed a five-point five plan to provide developing countries the fiscal space to recover from COVID crisis. And this includes debt relief, SDR, SDR creation and redistribution, concessional finance, mobilize, mobilization of climate fa finance, because that's another crisis looming ahead, and then ending illicit financial flows and return of stolen assets back to the developing countries. Because, uh, Excellencies, one trillion dollars every year, according to FACTI, one trillion dollars every year leaves poor countries to rich countries and tax havens. Excellencies, apart from its health and economic consequences, the COVID crisis has exacerbated the manifestations of religious discrimination, xenophobia, and Islamophobia in various parts of the world. We have witnessed this in our immediate neighborhood. The covert lockdowns have enabled the suppression of people in occupied territories, struggling for their right to self-determination. And then, for, for all uh, the leadership, I would want to point this out, it is essential to reject a reject any attempt to link Islam and terrorism. To link in Islam and terrorism is the biggest injustice which is being done to Muslims in the world. Similarly, we must oppose attempts where freedom of expression is used to, call, to cause pain to Muslims by denigrating our holy prophet Muhammad wasallam. At the UN, Pakistan, and Pakistan, Turkey, and OIC countries have in initiated a proposal for the annual observance of an international day to combat Islamophobia. Excellencies, the member states of ECO represent half a billion people and cover an area of 8 million square miles. We form the geographical link on the Asian continent between East and West, North and South. We, we possess two essential prerequisites for economic growth, rich resources and enterprising people. We have the potential for much larger production and consumption. Our common heritage and culture nurtured by luminaries, great men like Al-Biruni, Farabi, Rumi, Iqbal, they all provide a so solid foundation for cooperation under the ECOM umbrella. In the Vision 2025, the ECO members have set themselves an ambitious agenda of enhanced collaboration in trade, energy, tourism, agriculture, and industrial growth. We should under undertake a midterm review of the, of the progress made so far. Accelerate the pace of implementation and deepen the scope of cooperation. Excellencies in, in, in advancing our common objectives, we must take full advantage of our geographical location, economic assets, and political relationships. Regional connectivity and integration have been proven to be essential for rapid growth and development. Enhanced physical infrastructure will generate economic activity, trade, employment, mobility, and cross-border exchanges. Peace in Afghanistan is crucial to the success of such physical integration in ECO region. I hope that the successful culmination of the intra-Afghan negotiations 
will lead to durable peace and security in Afghanistan. Excellencies, our priorities and goals are clear. I propose that we focus on the following six points. First, we need to recover robustly from the economic and health crises induced by the pandemic. We must mobilize the national and international resources required for this purpose. I request ECO, ECO support for my five-point agenda, which I mentioned earlier. Second, we must adopt a plan to build resilient healthcare systems to respond to such crises in the future. We must possess the capacity to produce the medical equipment and medicines essential to respond to chronic and infectious diseases. Third, we must develop an integrated transport network to facilitate both intra-ECO trade and serve as a pathway for trade between the major economies to the east and west, north and south. The Istanbul, Tehran, Islamabad commercial cargo train and proposed Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, uh, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan railway links are important regional connectivity projects. In addition, linking CPAC with Afghanistan and beyond is vital. Fourth, we must implement the cross-border projects already agreed under the ECO members, including TAPI, gas pipeline, and the CASA 1000, establishing an ECO investment agency and organizing an annual ECO investment fair where investment-ready projects could be presented to ECO and global investors are ideas that can be explored. Fifth, studies indicate that our mutual trade, which is just 8% of our total trade, it's just 8% of our total trade. This could be expanded tenfold. Enhanced transport links will help, but we should promote conscious measures for trade promotion. Simplify border procedures. Establish intra-regional institutional linkages. Re reinforce existing regional mechanisms like ECO Trade Development Bank. Operationalize ECO Trade Agreement and develop new initiatives like the Clearing Union. Sixth, to remain competitive, we must promote knowledge-based economies. And this needs, and it needs that we enhance expenditures on research and development and focus on rapid digitalization, especially extension of broadband to all parts of our countries. The ECO as envisaged in the vision 2025 should engage in dialogues with other regional and international organizations. We could emulate some of the successful models of cooperation in the EU, ASEAN and African Union. Excellencies for Pakistan, the vision of ECO's regional economic integration is an, is, is an essential component of a strategy to transform the tensions of geopolitics into the dividends of geoeconomics. I would like to conclude by reaffirming Pakistan's abiding commitment to ECO, to the founding principles of the Treaty of Izmir, and to the full implementation of ECO Vision 2025. Excellencies, as, as per the rules, procedures of the ECO, I now propose election of President Tay Rajab Tayyip Erdogan as the chair of the 14th summit. I congratulate His Excellency Rajab Tayyip Erdogan, President of the Republic of Turkey, on his election and give him the floor to carry the summit forward.